Welcome to a new Webflow tutorial here on this Formwork channel. My name is Jonas Arlet and today we are creating a free column scroll animation. I came across this effect on a website I really like and they've got a few interesting animations in here. I put the link in the video description and the section starts right here and I think this element is something you could use in many different uh, projects. They also slide the images afterward. You could do that with three or more uh, slides and it's pretty neat how they even highlighted the names in here so that's cool. If you want to dive deeper into Webflow check out my Webflow export course where I teach uh, advanced the web design techniques for Webflow power users. In Webflow itself, I added everything into its own section. So if you clone the project for free in your Webflow dashboard, you can simply copy this section here out and replace the images and texts and you're all set up. I also integrated some dummy scroll content here above the section um, just to demonstrate that it makes more sense to put the uh, scroll animation uh, somewhere within the page and inside we have a scroll wrapper and the scroll uh, content wrapper which is the text that comes um, later uh, after the animation and we start by uh, giving the scroll wrapper element a uh, height and in this case I use about 350 VH so that means we scroll 3.5 times the browser window height until the whole animation is finished. And it seems like this is a bit long, but we will be moving a lot here. So I leave it like this and we can change this later. We also have a column scroll sticky element. And as the name suggests, we set this to position sticky and the top set to zero. And when I scroll now, you see at the scroll bar here on the right that it that um, that I'm scrolling now and the part here, the sticky part remains visible until the 350 VH section finished. So that works so far, but the images should always fill the full height. So we set the sticky element to be 100 VH, which shows um, via the blue outline here, but its inner content doesn't automatically fill the content. So that means inside we need another nested wrapper, um, more on that shortly, but we also set that one to 100% height, so it fills the parent. And to make sure it fills the full width, we set the a scroll sticky element to 100% width. And inside we have three items positioned side by side using display flex and nothing else needed here. And without a flex, they would stack uh, vertically. So a flex box is the right choice here. And now for the scroll animation, we plan to change the size of the sticky inner element. So we want it to shrink while the images inside maintain a fixed width and stack on top of each other. And we can imitate this here in the Webflow Designer. And we see that the, the items also changing their uh, width automatically because they are based on their parent element. And to change this, we have to use a fixed width to every element. So we can use 100 divided by three to make sure they're always equally filling the same width. But now if I would use percentage, then you, you see that it's still not working because if I change the sticky inner element or so the parent wrapper, they still get smaller. So we have to use another unit here that is not based on the wrapper element, but based on the viewport. So we use VW here and we also ensure that the height is 100%. Uh, so let's insert this one here. And inside each image is set to 100% width and height with object fit cover. And now to stack them on top of each other, we have to use position absolute on every one of these items. I already gave them combo classes, but I haven't styled them yet. So I use the first element, give them position absolute and then position it to the left part. And now every one of these items are going to be positioned on the left, but therefore I have included the combo classes. So this one is the center one. So this has the combo class of is two. And to center and position absolute element, we can use a little trick and that is to use a left and right to be zero. And also I think the top must be um, a, a auto. So let's change this here. And then we can use margin right left to be auto as well. And then the element should be uh, staying here in the center. And it still keeps its width and that's perfect. And the third item has the combo class of, I think it's is free, yeah. And then we position this one on the right and that's easy. We cha just change the position to the, to the right. And now let's check if it's working. If I change the inner to another width, 
no, it's not working. They are staying at their positions. That's because um, position relative is missing. So they are now stacking on top of each other and are orienting themselves to the parent um, sticky inner element. Perfect. And the last thing we want is to make them sticky to the right side and not the left. So we make the inner element position absolute and then position it to the uh, top, bottom and right uh, zero. And then if we change the width now, you see that they stack to the right side. And later we will animate the width here from 100 to 33 VW and that way the images will stack as intended. And for the staking order, the natural HTML order will be uh, placed here. So the left one should be on the top, then we have to switch them to be at the end of the uh, sticky inner list. And now you see that the order is changing and so we don't have to use a set index here, it's the natural HTML order. Let's see if it's working, if I change the sticky inner elements width now and yeah, it seems to work. And this is exactly the effect we will be animating later. And next, let's position the text content that comes afterwards. And I added a red border around our trigger area here, which is where the upper image scroller uh, section ends. And before that ends, we want to animate the text in. So that part at the scroll um, section should stay normally here inside or next to the images here. So therefore we can set um, the the content wrapper element to to be also 100% or 100 uh, VH, um, but maybe it's better to use a minimum height here of 100 VH. So it can grow, but it should be at a minimum of 100 VH. And then we can use a minus 100 VH margin to bring them like on top of our um, before um, scroll wrapper element. And right now the scroll content wrapper currently spans uh, the full width, but we only need about two thirds. So we set this one to be the width of 66.66 VW, giving some right padding to be left for the, uh, the, the, the last column. And in addition, I also gave the content wrapper an inner padding on the right side. And right now I cannot click the, the content wrapper element because um, the scroll wrapper is above. So we can set this one to be relative with the higher set index. And for the title, we also want them to be separated as a little stagger effect in the scroll animation later. And therefore I would wrap them in an overflow hidden diff. So this diff is basically just set to overflow hidden. And then if I um, yeah, demonstrate this here, um, if we uh, would move the text content, then you see that it's cropped and we have the same element um, again for the second line. So I can replace this inside here. And then we have those two elements with um, a combo class so we can animate them separately. So we give this element that is one a combo class and the other title line that is Two. As a trigger element for the animation, we will use this scroll wrapper here. So we go to interactions, click plus and select the while scrolling in view. And this is definitely an animation made for desktop right now. So on smartphones, it makes no sense. Maybe you, you have another idea. And then we choose play scroll animation and create a new one. And now we actually start by resetting what I positioned in the designer earlier. So the reason I moved it into the right column in the designer is so we can still continue working on um, the text content, for example. You can see that not all of the content and images are fully visible right now. That means we could intentionally set it up so the images can be still be replaced and adjusted here. So it's maybe a bit better to make it like this. And that's not a problem for the animation later because the animation will always override what you set up in the Webflow Designer. And that's important to understand. So now we can uh, take this uh, sticky inner element, go to the size settings and then set it to 100 VW. So it starts with 100% width, the full width and also the full height. And then we switch to 3.33 VW and the height remains at 100%. So this is basically our reset state to ensure we start at a full width. And of course, we don't uh, want it to shrink right from the beginning. That should happen a bit later. So we stay at about 100% until maybe 55%. So let's grab this one and bring it to the 55. 
So it's staying at the full width until this point. Let's try this out. Yep, and then it's going to the right. And that could be a bit earlier. So let's bring this maybe to the 50 mark. And then the and then change the sticky inner width also earlier. So it's that the, the text is not overlapping the images uh, too much. So maybe at the 83 mark and therefore the, the, the live preview here in the Webflow Interactions panel is perfect. Maybe here at the 72. And then it's overlapping a bit, uh, but maybe this is also looking cool. So I leave it maybe like this. And then next I want the items, the image items to ha come in with a little staggering effect. And therefore they all need uh, combo classes. So I also gave the first one, there is one combo class and then we can move them separately. The, let's go to the first one, take the move and bring it down 100%. So it's going down the full height of itself. So it's out of the viewport. And then we do the same with the second element. So let's duplicate this one, change the target to the second one, duplicate it again, change the target to the third. And then we uh, duplicate the whole group and bring it down maybe shortly before um, the, the, the sticky inner element is going smaller and then we bring them to the zero. Let's also do this for the other items, bring them to zero. And what happens now is they all come in, but it's barely uh, noticeable because they enter all at the same time. So we want a slight delay between them and that's uh, not a problem. We will take the first one where is number one here, this one, and set it to start at 1%. And that makes it easier to see what's happening. So then the second one starts a bit later, let's say at 10%, and the third one coming in at 20%. So we have a consistent 10% gap between each other, each one. And let's have a look now. Now you can see that it's like a staircase effect as they come in, but they all finish at the same time. And this is the important uh, cool effect here. And here I noticed that there's also a slight pause at the, when they dock on the top. And this is maybe because the size change of the inner sticky element, it doesn't happen exactly at the same 45%. And now it should instantly uh, shift once it reaches the top. So that's better, it's looking good. And lastly, we want to uh, animate the title. Let's also move them from maybe 100%. So it's out of their um, overflow hidden box and also duplicate this and do this for the second line. Let's grab this one. And then we duplicate both of them. And then they should come in uh, to zero at not 100%, maybe a bit earlier. And then uh, we can set the, the move in the Y axis to be zero. And the second one should come in with a little delay. So maybe a bit later. And let's preview this one. Then they're coming up. Yeah. And as you can see here, I also added an opacity to the text and button content elements, but you can also, of course, animate them however you want and also fine tune the positions of these elements a little bit. So the text content seems to come in a little bit earlier or the animation of the title. So you can see it more clearly. And also the, the elements, the content inner sticky element is going to the right a little bit earlier at around 40%. And it's ending at right at when the trigger is also ending. And that's why I also added the, the red border so you can better see when the trigger is ending. And right there, I um, ended the, the width of the sticky inner element. That's it for today. You'll find a free clonable link in the video description. And make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a high quality Webflow tutorials.